I am back again because there's more information um, coming out in the Sebastian Rogers case. Sebastian Rogers, the 15 year old boy, the uh, autistic boy that disappeared from Henderson, Tennessee, Hendersonville, Tennessee on February 26th. And this is some good work, guys. So um, there's this uh, you, uh, Facebook group that's called The Mysterious Disappearance of Sebastian Rogers. It's a pretty large group. I'm, I'm associated. Hey, Jules, it's nice to see you, love. I'm associated, like I'm a, a subscriber to this particular um, group. And um, so I monitor it along with, like there's, there's several Sebastian Rogers groups out there. This is one of the ones that I uh, monitor. It has a lot of people in it. So you have a lot uh, more perspective and stuff like that. And these people are doing amazing jobs. They're doing an amazing job. So this is from one of their subscribers. Uh, I'll say her first name's Monica and it says, okay, so I put together, I put this together. Please keep in mind this is mostly intended for people who are just learning about this case as people following closely know all of this already and are confused by a huge amount of information out there. Uh, try to stay away from the rumors. I know there's probably a lot of missing in the timeline, uh, but this is a version. This is the first version. So this person's asking for feedback and stuff like that. So we're going to be going through it. There's multiple slides associated with this particular um, case. And this is coming from Concern K. At least that's the watermark on here. And I'm just going to go through it uh, with you guys because, hold on a second, let me pull it up. There we go. I don't know where I downloaded it to. Give me just a second on this because I want to read it to you, but I may not. I may have to read it from the screen. It just makes it more, it just makes it easier if I don't have to read it from the screen. Docs, no, I don't know. Hold on here. Let me just... Oh, hey guys. Yeah, I don't, there we go. There we go. So basically what it says is it gives you a timeline and we'll just do it from here because I can't, while well, I get it up, Actually, I think that's 26 of 26, so there it is. So there's the uh, post right there in the system, and then we start off with the beginning of this, and I hit the wrong button. There we go. Looks like it's right here. So this is the beginning where they're bringing all the posts. They're doing it in chronological order here, so we have a good understanding of what has transpired in the Sebastian um, Rogers case and I'm gonna do this again downloading file let me go to file where the heck is my file I know it's got to be right here I just don't understand why I can't see it where in the world is my file on Google oh there they are good Lord heavens to Betsy heavens to Betsy and it's not downloading. It didn't have any downloaded. It said it's downloaded to the file documents. Let me see if it's in here. I think this might be it. It's opening, I think, and this is not it either. So I don't know where it's at, but we'll just go through it. So this is Sebastian Rogers. And then we have the next uh, slide is this one. It kind of gives you the table of contents, timeline, concerning facts, people in Sebastian's life. It also has maps, images, additional context videos, sources, and uh, superscripts uh, defined. And I just thought it was interesting as we go through here because this talks about the Victorian Place townhouse, uh, February 26, reported missing 6 to 6.30 in the morning, uh, reported as a runway, no shoes, keychain flashlight in his glasses. All of his shoes were accounted for. He left his phone at home. Katie um, stated she heard a thud. Um, cleared last proof of life was at the CCT food footage at the Texas Roadhouse. I want you guys to understand that. The last proof of life that we have of Sebastian Rogers was at the Texas Roadhouse. There is no proof of life videos. There's no documentation. There's no photographs. There's nothing that says after that Texas Roadhouse, has anybody seen him? We're hearing that from his mother. We're hearing it from his mother that he's made it home. Um, so we go go through here. Here's some dates uh, of events. December 8th, Sebastian was born. They have his birth date there. 
uh, June 21st, 2008, um, Katie Proudfoot and Seb uh, um, it looks like Seth Rogers got married. They got a divorce eight years later, which just so happens to coincide. Imagine that. So within eight years, Katie and Seth uh, get a divorce and separate. Do you know that it's about the eight year mark right now for um, Katie Proudfoot and Chris Proudfoot? If I've calculated it correctly, they're right about that eight year mark as well. I find that a little odd, you know, because people start having problems right before they get to their, their 10 year anniversary and a lot of, a lot of stuff. I, this is not the first time I've heard it either. Um, so anyways, uh, Katie Proudfoot and it looks like, uh, September 6th, something 2016, they got a divorce and it doesn't have a date of their, of, uh, Katie Proudfoot and Chris Proudfoot's marriage, but it was obviously somewhere between 2016 and where we are today. Um, she, uh, February 25th, 2024, according to Katie, uh, they went to the grocery store BJ's around noon, bowling alley. Uh, strikes and spares and out to dinner at the Texas Roadhouse and then went home. That is That timeline has, has changed a little bit as well because she said in the Chronicles of Olivia interview that after BJ's they came home. So we're up in the air about that. February 26, Sebastian reported missing 6 to 6.30 and danger child alert at 12.17 p.m. So at 12.17 p.m., they realized that this was not your normal run-of-the-mill uh, child walked out the door situation. At 12.17, at they knew more was involved, okay? On February uh, 20, 27, Amber Alert was issued. When the Amber Alert was issued at 4.25, there was no doubt in their mind that this child was um, that they believe something majorly happened to this child. I, I do believe that TBI, as well as law enforcement, knew immediately this was not your run-of-the-mill um, standard child walked out the door runaway situation because they're indicating this here. You're not going to get an endangered child alert or an amber alert for a runaway kid, okay? It's just not going to happen. Uh, one thing that they have missing from the timeline here is also on February 27th, Chris Proudfoot left. He left and made his way back to Memphis to pick up his camper. And I'd like, I, and, and granted, you know, they did an amazing job. God bless whoever. Um, oh, this is not quite yet. No, we haven't gotten there. I, I'm thinking it's April, but it's not. It's We're still in February. So, uh, oh, that is when he, yes, February. So right here is when uh, Chris Proudfoot did leave. Hey, golly, I can't believe it's already been over. Oh, it's been almost 60 days, hasn't it? My word, my word. So right here, we know that law enforcement knew something was seriously wrong by the 27th. This is the same day that Chris Proudfoot left to go get his camper. On the same day that they issue this Amber Alert. On March 3rd, um, it looks like there was an interview, a YouTube, on inter an interview on YouTube. I try, I'm trying to get out of the way. And then we have the WSMU4 Holly Thompson interview on March 4th, which was right about eight days after this um, this event. And then here's more of the timeline, March 7th, 2024. That's when they had the Fox News hands-only interview. They had March 17th, which is a Duchess interview. I haven't seen that one. March 18th, which was the Chronicles of Olivia interview. We had Smiley's World, the Nancy Grace, Smiley's World, Fox News, so all of these interviews. We also have on this um, website, this um, YouTube, excuse me, Facebook page, The Mysterious Disappearance of Sebastian Rogers. They also have somebody that prepared a spreadsheet with all the links to all the interviews. And it is amazing because, I mean, it, it really shows you the totality of all the Seth interviews in conjunction with um, Katie and Chris's interviews. And I've got to tell you, it is a little concerning, to say the least, you know. And then we go over to some concerning facts like no 911 call, three-way to the sheriff, seem to have vanished without a trace, no evidence of either running away nor foul play. It, that The lack of evidence leads me to believe there was some type of cleanup. 
uh, three-hour phone call conversation between Katie Proudfoot and Chris Proudfoot. Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot are not boots on the ground searching the inconsistent statements, the back and forth out of state. You know, that's a little hinky. Everybody's not feeling comfortable uh, with that. No, we don't know if he's been discharged from military or if they re if he retired. Um, I believe that it, it, there was indication from Chris as an, as a neighbor saying that Katie receives a pension from military. Now, I don't know um, how much that pension is, but if she's receiving a pension, she most likely did retire. Uh, in order to get that 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 mo monthly siphon, um, so we have the inconsistent statements, the back and forth out of town, um, not attending vigils. You know, these are things that we heard the uh, thud um, that was introduced into the um, equation. Chris Powdford admitted a history of child protective services. Chris and Katie insist there was a dog sent. However, L E says no hit and chris the one thing missing up here and chris was eager to say that he had been cleared and he had passed a lot polygraph test knowing damn good and well those two statements were absolutely false but he wanted that appearance he couldn't handle having somebody look at him so he lied to us and continued to lie to us until he was caught um, Kathy and, and, and Terry, which is Chris Proudfoot's parents, it's his mom and his stepfather, and they drove to Alaska from Tennessee days after Sebastian's disappearance. Many people said that they felt like it was almost Brian Laundry parents-esque, right? Um, if you guys remember when Gabby Petito was first missing, they, they took this family camping trip out to Fort DeSoto over in like Pinellas County. Uh, Pinellas County, Florida. Um, so that must have been the one I was on. And then, of course, people in Sebastian's life. He was um, he was 15. You know, he went to Beach High School. He liked Minecraft, video games, fishing, animal. His dislikes were, were uh, not being barefoot, which just so happens to be a little concerning because he left the home barefoot when he doesn't like being barefoot. Um, specifically traced back uh, to a time he walked in a hill of ants barefooted. Uh, the Morkies names, we don't have the Morkies names, uh, but they have dogs there diagnosed with autism and uh, 6Q27 chromosome deletion syndrome. It means basically his body has deleted a chromosome. So he has to have chromosome therapy and take medication for that, which he has not been on in a very long time since he left this house. Um, without shoes, without food, without phone, uh, just walked out of the house in all black, just so happens to be in all black clothing to boot. I mean, geez, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. Uh, Chris Palfoot's stepfather, and it just goes through some of the people, the vehicles, the work van, and everything like that. We just saw a recent video of um, Katie Proudfoot. I literally bounced. I did a live on YouTube, and I bounced between Riley Strain's mom, her not knowing where her son was and doing everything she could to find him, and bounced back and forth to Katie's new interview. Uh, and you can see a, a huge difference in... Um, in the behaviors of Katie, which I don't believe, I believe did something to her son versus Riley Strain's mother, which I don't believe did anything to her son. And you see a clear difference in behavior and how they feel about their child. So um, for the people that are coming in, if they wanna know, <clears throat> I'm just going over the timeline. Uh, this is something that was done on a uh, website. It is, um, uh, do I have a picture of it? I probably do back here. It's the um, the Sebastian uh, Mister mysterious disappearance of Sebastian Rogers, and I just been following it. And this person right here, this Mark Monica, actually prepared this beautiful uh, presentation and uploaded it on there that basically outlines the timeline and the people. And it's like a really thorough report. There's still some information that still needs to be plugged in in here, but it's it's a definitely a working um, a working uh, package right and I mean it, it's very thorough it gives you different um, um, mappings it gives you different um, thoughts and she tried to keep it as much to the facts as possible 
But I recommend to everybody that's learning about this case to go over there and download it. And of course, they've got all the photos that are released to the public to be able to use in there. And it's just going over some stuff. We This one right here is the one that <clears throat> kind of bothers me a little bit for, for a variety of reasons. You know, it seems like when they when uh, Sebastian was younger, they seemed to be a really happy family. It seemed like, you know, obviously he's gravitating toward his mom. But there were some photos. There was a few just fear. I, I can't find a lot of photos of Sebastian and Christopher together. That has been a, a, a big complaint across. I, I've been reading people's comments. They've been having problems with these photos. I don't know how many of them exist. It doesn't sound like too many. But the problem I have believe it or not, are these two photos right here. It's these two. Because if you notice, both of those photos look like they're fairly close. I mean, they're, they're still, they're fairly the same age. Yet they keep, they have puppy here, they have puppy here. Where are those puppies? It seems like those dogs would still be with the Proudfoots right now. What did they do with those dogs? Not that I think that they did anything like um, bad, like, like they hurt them or anything. It just means that they got this animal. It became too much for them to deal with and they had to get rid of it. And they did this not once, but twice. It seems like they like the cute little puppies. And then they, these look like pretty big dogs. And pretty big dogs are a handful. If you don't have time to run them, if you don't have time to, to take them outside and literally run them, you're going to have a dog that's going to tear up your shoes, tear up your house, just a whole host of things. When you have a large dog, they have to be ran. If you want, if you see people with these amazing large dogs that are just lap dogs and wonderful dogs, it's because they know how to take them outside and make sure they get their energy out before they come in. So I'm thinking that these right here grew up just a little bit bigger and Mr. Crowdfoot himself's like, nah, we gotta get rid of them, right? When anything becomes a problem, it's time to get rid of them. So it's just a pattern of behavior. I mean, we do have a, a child that appeared to have been a problem and he just so happens to be gone, like he was gotten rid of. So I just, you know, just thought I'd point that out, you know, cause I'm such a sarcastic woman and I like pointing things like this out, you know? Actually, I don't. It's just behavior. I feel like there's a behavior here. And, and that is uh, what is concerning about it. So we just have a lot of stuff. There's searches and everything else. If you guys have an opportunity to go over there and check this out, please do. Uh, that's all I was bringing up to you is, is there are a lot of resources out there that you guys can be looking at to educate yourself on this case if you so choose. I'm watching it. I'm keeping it down. So if you don't want to go and have to hunt and search for all this stuff, that's okay. It's okay. You can just stay here right here on the Bullhorn Betty channel, here on TikTok, on YouTube. And it doesn't matter which platform you sit on because I will make sure that you know what you need to know. So this is just a little more information, another tool in our toolbox to help us decipher a lot of information. So go over there to the mysterious disappearance of Sebastian Rogers and check that Facebook group out. Guys, take care. Please don't forget to say a prayer. Many of you guys know, or maybe you don't know, and actually why I got you here. We got some a little concerning news right now to report. Oh, thank you. We reported it earlier on a live here on TikTok, um, but there was remains that were found in Mississippi, okay? We don't know who they are. We have no knowledge whether they're Sebastians or whether they're somebody else. I just know because it was in Mississippi, a whole bunch of people reached out to me, freaking out, worrying about this. And why are they so worried about this? This is so far away from where Chris and Katie are, right? This is in Lawrence County. It's by the Pearl River, some four to five hours away from their camping site, okay? Four to five hours, depending on which route they take four to five hours from their camping site. If you wanna see that, it's right here. There's their camping site right here. This is where, uh, around the area of where these remains, these remains that floated to the uh, surface were. They're saying that these remains are a few weeks old. We don't know what that means. Um, but the crazy part about this is they don't know who this guy, who, I don't wanna say guy, cause they, they haven't released whether it's a male, female, uh, boy, girl, adolescent, we don't know. Um, what we do know is they don't know who it is. They have no missing people in the area, none. 
So they're actually asking us to get this information out. So if you have had a friend in the area or anywhere that is missing and you haven't heard from them in, in several weeks, they're asking you to reach out to your law enforcement and, and, turn, and, and turn them in. And somebody's saying drifted. It's absolutely possible. It's absolutely possible. It's been six weeks. I mean, look at Riley Strain. He went eight miles. He went eight miles in 14 days. Think about that. Eight miles in 14 days. So we are at six weeks. So you're looking at 16, 20, depending on how fast the current goes, maybe 30 miles, possibly. But either way, we don't know if this it has any relevance or is any way, shape, or form associated at all with um, Sebastian Rogers. It's just we need to find out who this person is and law enforcement's asking uh, for assistance in that. And of course, with it being in Mississippi and nobody having a clue where this kid is and his stepfather just so happens to be in Mississippi whenever he disappeared, obviously it's got a lot of people concerned. Uh, we just, unfortunately, nobody really has the answers. If somebody's telling you it's this way or that way, don't listen to them because I can guarantee they're probably not gonna have an identity for this person for at least a week or more, unless they truly believe it's, you know, and they do a DNA test or whatever, then we'll probably have the results of that sooner. Uh, but somebody said, well, what if it is him? Well, if it, to me, if it is him, I think we, we know who's responsible. Um, there's just a piece of me that thinks um, this is just one of those things where you know, every case we have, we always find an extra person or two that we didn't know was out there. I feel like this might be another one of those situations. So we'll see. Um, but we'll keep our fingers crossed and, and pray to God we get some resolution on this case soon. And if you have a missing loved one, please reach out to your local law enforcement. Um, and it says 17 year old, hold on, we got somebody else here uh, that says, uh, Crystal says a 17 year old boy missing in Memphis that looks like identical to Sebastian. So there's also another person missing in Memphis, a 17 year old boy missing in Memphis. Let's just check it out. 17 year old missing Memphis. Let's see, why not? Uh, No, um, it says missing Memphis teen found safe on February 26. I think this is, it says, um, was it from Scotland County? It says Memphis, oh, that's Missouri. That's not even, even close to Tennessee, sorry. Oh, here's one, let's see what this one says. A 17-year-old boy found after he was missing nearly a week, Memphis police say, and this came in March 4, oh, that's 2022. So maybe, I don't, I don't see it in here. It's possible. Maybe I'm searching it wrong. I don't see anything from 2024, though. Oh, three days ago. No, that's a 17-year-old charged with M-U-D-R, M-U-R-D-E-R of two teens. Can you send me that, Crystal, to bullhornbetty at gmail.com? Anything on that case? I'm interested in it. I must be searching wrong because nothing's really popping up for me as uh, still missing um, recently. I see a missing girl, but it looks like she was found safe. But that's all I could find. There's got to be more, so I apologize about that. Um, who else do we have? Sayon Web Sleuth. I'm a fan of yours. Well, thank you, Missing People Alert. God bless you. All right, I think that's really it. I just wanted to bring you guys to that um, that uh, Facebook group and I wanted you guys to read some of the hard work. I mean, there's a lot of people that are just doing this as a labor of love. That, that package that I just went through was 26 pages. I can't imagine that, that that was easy to compile or put together. I'm sure that took hours upon hours for that person to do it. Um, that person did that because they, they, they wanna help. Um, you know, they had the ability to do it and they did it. It wasn't because of any other purpose than to help this case. And, you know, God bless all the people that do that. I just had an experience um, yesterday where we were here on TikTok 
And I had another content creator from YouTube reach out to me that saw something in, in one of the images that they saw on um, satellite. Now, granted, we all know that the satellite images are dated differently. You know, what you're seeing is really not what you're seeing. It could be, you know, several years old. Uh, we understand that, but we figured if we could just find somebody in Jackson, Tennessee, just, you know, not out of their way where they're, they're right there, you know, maybe they could just check on it just to settle a lot of, within two hours, we had somebody out there checking on it. Somebody I didn't know, just a beautiful person that wanted to do their part because they could do it. They had the ability to go out there and do it. And I got to say, it was amazing. So we did clear, I don't, I know there's probably that, that image where it looks like a, somebody's face is in like the bushes, I don't know if you guys seen that, and it's in Jackson, uh, Tennessee. We have cleared that that is not legit, it's not viable. We had somebody go out there and walk that area, find that location, and there was nothing there. Her name was Stephanie. I just wanna give a big shout out. She knows which Stephanie she is. Just thank you for that. You're an amazing woman. Um, and I just appreciate you you covering our six. Um, we, it's much appreciated. So guys, that's it. That's all I really have. Get over there. Try to get some uh, information about this. I'm going to be dropping information as stuff breaks down. Uh, but I know there's a lot of new people coming to this case. They're starting to get really concerned about this young boy that hasn't been around, hasn't been seen, hasn't been heard. And we are too. We are too. We're doing everything we can. I'll be out there on the 21st. I've got some maps I'm going to be working uh, I've got some areas that I'm going to be working. I'm hoping that I can designate some significant time there. Um, but I also have an issue where, it, depending on how things work out, I may need to cut that short to go to Michigan. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, but anyways, guys, you guys have an amazing Sunday. This is going to be my last live because I also have court this week. I got court and I got to get prepared for court. I don't even know if you guys can see that. You guys can't. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Not fun. Not fun, right? So I will be there with bells on. So tomorrow and tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday, you guys are going to be hit. It's going to be a hit and miss. Um, you're probably not going to see me on here for a couple days. I got to fly out to Illinois. I'm going to have court one day. I got to fly out one day, have court one day, and fly back home one day. So it's a three day trip. I'll be in airports or courts. So I doubt for three days you're going to see much of me. So I'll try to keep uh, my ear plugged to everything that's going on here when I can go live with you guys and let you know any updates. I will be sure to do that. But that's just kind of the schedule we've got coming up. So, guys, you have an amazing Sunday. God bless you. And let's pray. Let's pray that answers in this case, the Sebastian Roger case, um, come. You know, we need answers. We need answers. We need to find this boy. All right, guys. Bye.